Hello and good evening. Welcome to Stutter Pot TV. I'm your host, NJW, and we're here with another crime news episode. A 34-year-old woman is behind bars after accidentally shooting her 10-year-old son. At 11.21pm on Thursday, the 6th of July, authorities responded to Grady Memorial Hospital in Clayton County, Georgia on report of a person shot. Medical staff told police Brittany Parks and her boyfriend brought a child to the hospital and the victim had died. Now that's got to be heartbreaking to kill the person you gave birth to on an accident or intentional. So my heart goes out to the lady. Brittany told officers she was unloading a handgun when it accidentally discharged. She said that the bullet pierced through the wall and into another room and hit her son. Through multiple interviews, Brittany and her boyfriend gave different accounts of what led up to the shooting. Police then developed probable cause against Brittany based on her and her boyfriend's statements. So, if they didn't have their story together, one of them is eventually getting arrested. You can guarantee that. Because someone has to be accountable before this little child's death. On the 7th of July, officers arrested Brittany and booked her into the Clayton County Jail on charges of involuntary manslaughter, second degree cruelty to children and reckless conduct. The investigation into the matter continues. So she hasn't even buried her son yet or anything and they're already charging her with his death. Mm, that's, it's hard to fathom, but that's, that's the laws. A 47-year-old man is behind bars in connection to the death of his 49-year-old wife last month. At 5.41am on Sunday the 25th of June, a passerby reported seeing a deceased woman laying in the roadway near the intersection of Legend Road and Killing Road west of Highway 371 in Fort... So he done ran her over. There's no if and bust about it. Maybe they was in an argument. You know, you can only assume what happened. I'm pretty sure she didn't get out on the freeway and he ran her over. They were probably in an argument. She got out the car and got in front of the car and he ran her over. Uh, it's the heat of passion. Ripley, Minnesota. Authorities responded to the scene and found the body. The next day, the investigators identified the victim as Angela Marie McLennan and determined that she was fatally struck by a vehicle. Police said that after spending two weeks investigating and piecing the events leading up to Angela's, Angela's death, death, authorities Authority identified the victim's husband, Tony James McLennan, as a suspect. Angela, Angela and Tony lived together, together in the Fort Ripley home. At 8.30pm on Monday the 10th of July, Tony was arrested and charged with second degree murder and criminal vehicular homicide. He remains held at the Crow Wing County Jail. The motive of the killing is unclear as the investigation into the matter continues. So they investigated this crime, but the last crime, the lady got charged right away. They cuffed her on the hospital bed. They waited two weeks to arrest him. A middle school principal was arrested in a sting operation after allegedly attempted to meet up with a 16-year-old girl for sex in a remote area. 55-year-old Derek Look at him. He looked like he liked coochie instead of a woman part. The real woman part, he like girl, girl parts. Got his ass. Erickson started communicating on Snapchat with a 16 year old student and allegedly made statements and eventually overt actions of his intentions to engage in sex with the minor. He allegedly posed as a younger adult and then used his position as a Johnson City Middle School principal in New York along with school district database information to convince the 16 year old who he really was. Oh, this ain't his first rodeo doing this. This is just his first time getting caught. It may not be his first time getting caught, but it's his first time them blasting him on TV. Daniel and the teen had allegedly been speaking for about a week prior to their scheduled meetup on the 7th of July. He allegedly made multiple attempts to meet with her, including going to her home. The teen, however, did not leave her house to meet him. On the 5th of July, the Broome County Sheriff's Office learned about Daniel's alleged intentions to see the teen. And after that point, there was no further risk of harm to the juvenile female at any time. Detectives went to the location where Daniel and the team were supposed to meet and arrested him on charges of luring a child and attempted rape. He reportedly brought a box of condoms. A 
They done put his whole family on blast. They sitting there like a happy-go-lucky family. There's one black guy sitting there like a fly landed on buttermilk. And they just putting him on blast, aren't they? Donald's Grim is shaking chicken nuggets. Daniel's been held at the Broom County Jail without bond. He looked like the investigation into okay. the matter continues. A 29-year-old Texas woman is behind bars after she left her two-year-old son home alone while she went out clubbing. See, when you got a parent like that, they actually didn't want to be parents. So you actually have to want to be a parent to act like one. And she left her baby at home to go clubbing. She's still trying to have more, and she ain't done being uh, hanging out. The yes, police department said a relative called 911 shortly after midnight on Saturday the 8th of July to say she found the boy running around his living room in an apparently empty home. When an officer arrived at the home along Lakeside Drive in Odessa, Texas, he found the main door unlocked and no one answered when he announced himself. The officer stated that the child walked over to him and he grabbed him. A relative who called 911 told the officer that the boy's mother, Gretel Suarez Negron, might be at Club 305. Another officer found a vehicle in the back parking lot. Another relative told officers it was Gretel's custody weekend and she Okay, well, if, instead of calling the cops on this lady, why didn't they just go get the child so the child wouldn't be in the system? See, it's hard. It's easy for the kids to get in the system. It's hard to get them out. And that's what people need to know. You can just call if you want, but it would be better off for you to win and got it and then call if you're going to call. You should be the only one at the residence. The officer noted that the boy could have wandered into the busy roadway or the lake, which was only within feet of his home. Gretel was arrested and charged with abandoning and endangering a child. She remains held at the Ector County Jail on a $30,000 bond. If convicted, Gretel faces up to 20 years behind bars. Now she done left the baby in the house to go clubbing, to get arrested. Well, she can't do no clubbing. She gonna be drinking hot Kool-Aid. A 38-year-old Pikeville, Tennessee man is behind bars for fatally shooting a 24-year-old woman during a domestic dispute. At around 8 a.m. on Monday the 10th of July, authorities responded to a home along Cherry Road in Sparta, Tennessee and reports of shots fired. I wonder why they put vests on these men when they locked up. That's like the fifth or sixth man I'd have seen with a vest on. When officers arrived at the property, they found they Clayton Matthew blank. Watson sitting on the front porch with his eight-year-old son, telling him that he'll be going away to prison for a long time. At that time, the child's mother ran out to say that Clayton had shot and killed Dara Jade Baker inside the house, and Clayton was taken into custody. When officers entered the home, they found Dara's unresponsive body with gunshot wounds and a gun located nearby. A relationship between Clayton and Dara has not been disclosed, and it's unclear what events led up to the shooting. Clayton is charged with first degree murder and he's held at the White County Jail on a $1 million bail. The investigation into the matter continues. A 20 year old man is behind bars for fatally stabbing his uncle. And just before 2 pm on Sunday, the 9th of July, he stabbed his uncle. Well, uh, I can't imagine what the uncle could have done to get stabbed by his nephew. That's got to be an internal hate. Authorities were called to the Southern Regional Medical Center in Riverdale, Georgia, in reference to a man who had been stabbed. Detectives learned that the stabbing occurred at a home less than a mile away in the 6700 block of Fellow Water Circle. When officers arrived at the residence, they found the suspect identified as Jabaris McCrary sitting on the front porch with several injuries from a knife. He reportedly stabbed his uncle when a verbal argument turned physical. The victim, whose age and identity were not released, was rushed to the hospital by other family members. He later died due to his injuries. Jabaris was arrested and charged with felony murder and possession of a knife during the commission of a crime. The investigation into the matter continues. Well, there you have it. Another crime episode on Stir the Pot TV. Subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you guys next week, same time, same channel. Thanks for watching.